Well, hello there and welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers, we're glad you're with us. We're here every week. As you know, we meet interesting people and dealing with topical issues. And it's not topical because it's winter and we're going to talk <laughs> baseball. But it's, it's definitely a, a person that we should have had on The, the Verdict and I'm, I'm glad he's been able to make time to come by. Yes, we uh, had Mike Holder on uh, not too long ago and when the show was over, Mike said, what can I do for you? And I said, do what you can to let us get Josh Holliday on the show because we'd love to have him on our show. OSU's baseball coach, relatively new baseball coach. Mm -hmm. Nobody's new in our, in our tenure here, but uh, uh, doing quite well at Oklahoma State, getting the program uh, running real well, and we asked him to come down, and he said he'd be delighted to. And so we're going to present him mm -hmm. to you today. I think you'll enjoy it. We'll talk about the past. We're talking about the present. And we'll talk about the future of the Cowboy baseball program today with Josh Holliday. Stay with us. You're watching The Verdict. I've known I was going to be an artist since I was a little kid. I still have teachers that in grade school that still have my artwork. I think I told them something along the lines, this is keep that, it's going to be worth money someday. I'm Justin Mater, I'm an artist, and I'm Chickasaw. My muse is the Muskokian, the Mississippian art. When I see that, my mind just fills up with bubbles of ideas. My big thing right now is shell carving, the shell gorgets. My work is refined more and more until I found my own rhythm. I also do metallurgy, where I've uh, been acid etching copper and hammering copper to make a copper repose. You only have one chance to do it right, so it, it requires a lot of planning and thought and just patience. My Chickasaw heritage is the foundation of who I am. It's the roots of where I come from, and it inspires me as an artist and inspires the tenacity of never giving up. Learn more about today's Chickasaws at profilesofanation.com. People have been talking about energy independence for a long time. It's always been popular, but today it's possible. We have an enormous supply of oil and gas in the United States, much more than we thought just a few years ago. New technology, massive new discoveries, largely made by Oklahoma companies. It literally changes everything. And Oklahoma is leading the charge. Go watch this video to see why. Energy independence starts with us. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today we're really pleased to welcome to the set of The Verdict Josh Holliday, the head baseball coach at Oklahoma State University and a member of one of Oklahoma's premier baseball families, the Holidays. Uh, he had, was appointed to his position in 2013. While an uh, undergraduate at Oklahoma State University, he played four years, setting a number of records. Uh, there are way too many to mention, and uh, most of them still stand today. He was quite an outstanding player as well as an academic scholar. Uh, he was drafted by the Toronto Blue Jays and played in that organization for a couple of years when he decided that coaching was in his, uh, in his blood, just as it had been in his father's and still is in his father's blood. He served as an assistant coach uh, at uh, Oklahoma State, North Carolina State, Georgia Tech, uh, Arizona State, and Vanderbilt, and then <clears throat> was hired by Oklahoma State University to take over the program, uh, as I said, in 2013, or 2013 yes. Is that right? Uh, that's a July 2012. 2012. And then our first season was 2013. First you season was 2013. Yep. Yeah, uh, and has been doing great things in Stillwater since then with the mm -hmm. baseball program. This is his first visit to the verdict, and uh, we sure are glad you're here. Thank you, Kent. It, it is great to have you on the team. On. I appreciate. I, it. I didn't know you were such an academic scholar. I'm looking on here. You know, Stillwater High School, co valedictorian. That's not a small school. You know, I mean, you didn't beat out 15 other people to, to get that honor. That's a, that's a significant honor. Congratulations, well, 25 years yeah, later. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm, I, uh, I had a very, very, uh, very good structure from my mom when it came to my schoolwork. Yeah. And uh, every day you get home from school before you could go out and play, you had to make sure your homework is done. And just had two very loving, supportive parents that encouraged mm -hmm. both my brother and I to try to sign your work with excellence no matter mm -hmm. what you're doing. And certainly... Uh, for me, academically, that was very important because uh, going to Oklahoma State and earning my degree and studying something mm -hmm. uh, that I knew I was going to use in life has given me a chance to have uh, 
this awesome opportunity now to be back and coach and do what I love. So academics were the foundation, uh, certainly for me, that uh, has given me a chance today to be a head coach and to lead our kids and help share my experience with them mm -hmm. uh, with hopes that they'll get an education and study something they're passionate about as well. I would think that's a speech that would sell very well in the homes of young men who are considering going to school somewhere, especially with their parents. Well, <clears throat> it's so refreshing for me to recruit to Oklahoma State because I'm, I'm really just sharing my life story and sharing with people uh, what the university did for me, how it helped me grow. Uh, obviously, the chance to play on the, on the field and experience the team moments were precious, but uh, what it did for me uh, as a student, I met my wife, I met my best friends, and really laid the foundation for me for what I wanted to do with my life, which was uh, uh, follow my father's footsteps and become a coach. And, and, and have a career and a lifestyle of serving kids and helping them uh, figure out what it is that really inspired them. So uh, it's, it's great to talk to people about what the college experience can do. It's even more challenging to build a baseball program that uh, promotes that culture to where our kids come into Oklahoma State uh, with their eye on greatness as ball players, but also uh, with a, a real understanding of what this education can do for them. Mm -hmm. It jumped off your resume uh, to me uh, when I read that uh, that you're the first Oklahoma State baseball player to also be the head co baseball coach at Oklahoma State University with a long list of famous, uh, marvelous baseball players Oklahoma State has produced over the years to be the first one to assume the position of head coach. That must be really meaningful for you. Well, it's an honor for me uh, because not only did I play there, but I grew up there. And yeah. so I'm very much aware of, of who all of our uh, great alumni are, our great players, and many of whom still work in the game of baseball today. So for Coach Holder and President Hargis to think enough of me to trust me with this responsibility is it's an awesome honor and one that uh, I take very seriously. And uh, I think when you look at Oklahoma State, I think it's very neat to see at our university guys like John Smith and, and Mike Gundy mm -hmm. and Alan Bratton and myself and, and Coach Holder who are all former athletes at the university that, that uh, performed and competed in our sports that are now mm -hmm given the awesome opportunity to come back and coach at our alma mater. I think that's a, a real special quality that our department has. And uh, Alan Bratton and I sat with Coach Holder the other day at the Bedlam football game and, and watched the game and just reflecting back on our own experiences as, a, as athletes mm -hmm. at Oklahoma State was a lot of fun. So it is a special place. It has a, a special effect on you when you go to school and play there. And it's the kind of town and university that draws you back because you're very proud of and thankful for what it did for you. Yeah, you were. Um, uh associated with college baseball and got to watch it from a very young age, your father being the pitching coach for, mm -hmm. I guess, what, 79 or 80 on into the, mm -hmm. to the 90s and eventually the head coach. You literally kind of grew up in that stadium and I can recall in my previous lifetime as a sportscaster watching you and your brother play catch with the, with yeah. the, with the varsity, uh, you know, just throwing the game around, throwing the ball around. So growing up in that environment, how does mm -hmm. that give you a different perspective today looking back on the program as a coach? Well, don't mention your vocabulary that you picked up very early. <laughs> Leave that out, but go right. ahead. Well, <laughs> it was an unbelievable way to grow up because if you think back to the, the great players that we had, the Pete and Cavillas and the Robin Venturas and all those championship teams, at a young age, I, I really didn't think there was any other way to go about it other than to be the best or to win a championship. That's what you observed as a kid was all these great, powerful winning teams and going to the College World Series and these elite, uh, you know, performers, these national players of the year. So what, a, what an awesome education in terms of observing what it takes to be good at something and, and what a great uh, uh, series of, of older brothers, so to speak, to watch and learn from. And my brother and I were both very lucky because we, we saw at a very young age, right before our eyes, what it took to be great at something. And I think there's, uh, there's no substitute for having grown up in those locker rooms and on those buses and in those dugouts with those players. So very lucky and, and, and those, those childhood memories for me are still very strong. I saw Robin Ventura last week and even today uh, as a grown up, he's still my hero. And uh, yeah. it goes back to those days <coughs> as a little kid, uh, watching him have hitting streaks. And you know, I think it tells you a lot about him that he's a major league manager and he didn't even you know, coach prior to it. So for people to see him as that type of leader and have that kind of presence, I think that's something we all knew a long time ago. Yeah. Just divert for a minute about your experience at the World Series this year. You got to go up there and watch a game or two, uh, I guess watch the final game in Boston mm -hmm. uh, with your brother playing. Uh, how was that, uh, watching the World Series with a, yeah. with a family member participating? Uh, it's, it's awesome. Every time Matt gets the opportunity to have these, these kind of once-in-a-lifetime moments, you pinch yourself and say, I can't believe Matt's playing in the World Series. But he's been so fortunate to be on good teams, and uh, his career has been 
uh, one of, of many awesome moments, whether it's All-Star Games or World Series or whatever it may be. And uh, to sit there and watch him play in Fenway Park in Game 6, and even though it didn't turn out the way we'd hoped, uh, just to realize what a unique life experience to, to compete at the very highest level against the, the best players and the best teams. And ironically enough, John Farrell was the, was the winning manager, yeah, another mm -hmm. former Oklahoma State guy. So <clears throat> you just observe sport in that setting, and you just feel real lucky that you get to go to something like that and, and, and kind of feel a city like Boston erupt after winning a world championship. Mm -hmm. it's, it's things that uh, you look back and say, I'm really glad I took the time to fly up there and see it. But very proud of Matt and, and very excited that uh, baseball has been so good to he and his family. It, it, it all starts with players. How do you how do you put together a roster? Of, you know, how do you find players for for OSU's baseball team? Well, it's it's definitely uh, that's definitely where it starts. And uh, for us, <clears throat> our coaching staff, uh, Rob Walton and Marty Lees and I, uh, we we started right here at home in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, we're very excited to say that in the most recent signing period, we brought in nine players out of the state of Oklahoma out of the 14 kids we recruited. So mm -hmm. for us, it starts right here inside of our own borders. There's a, a lot of talent in this state. There are a lot of really strong high school programs and quality coaches that are doing really good things with our young athletes. And so we want to be the program that if a young man in the state of Oklahoma grows up and says, I want to play college baseball at the highest level, and I want to go somewhere where there's pride and tradition and a great education, that uh, they view Oklahoma State as that destination. So we've started to rebuild our roster right here at home. Uh, on top of that, you go out and look for the very, very best you can get because to win a national championship, you need talented players. But you also need players with makeup that have leadership quality. So we will look uh, far and wide, but we certainly start right here. And uh, I feel real good about the direction that our roster is heading. And I'm very excited about our team in, in mm -hmm. the 2014 season. And you've got to compete, though, not only against other <laughs> colleges, you've got to compete against professional baseball. Uh, and sometimes uh, uh, players play more than one sport, and baseball is sometimes a secondary sport mm -hmm. for a football player or a basketball sure. player, and, and um, there's a lot of options to, to some of these young men. There are, and uh, I think you said it well. There are a lot of great universities out there, and obviously in our sport we have the unique challenge of uh, fending off the, the major league draft directly out of high school, whereas in football and basketball you're at least guaranteed to get them mm -hmm. to campus. So we have to make good decisions about the types of players we recruit. We have to have a good feel for how committed uh, the player and his family are to the educational component of this decision. And um, you don't want to shortchange yourself uh, by not recruiting some of the highest end players, but you also have to make sure that you're recruiting a crop of players that intend to attend. Uh, yeah. If not, you're left with a roster that's <clears throat> missing some pieces. So <clears throat> we, uh, we spend a lot of time researching the kids, uh, communicating with both the player and the family to understand what it is they want. And I think it's something that we've got uh, a really good experience base on our coaching staff uh, between Rob's time at Oral Roberts where he knows the state of Oklahoma quite well the last 15 years and I've been all over the country at various schools so we've all got recruiting networks of people out there that we can lean on to turn us on to the top players and, and then kind of take it from there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're looking for pitchers? You're always looking for pitchers. Uh, you know, the game starts on the mound obviously mm -hmm. and the, the, the change in college baseball with the way the bats have been <clears throat> brought down, so to speak. Uh, pitching has really become front and center, uh, I think, the key to winning. And uh, pitching and defense and timely hitting, much like the formula you see at the, at the highest levels of baseball, mm -hmm. has kind of returned to college baseball. The days of 18 to 17 is, is somewhat <laughs> gone now. Yeah. So I think it's a better product. It's a, it's a faster game. It's a game that more people can plan to come out and see because it doesn't take three and a half hours anymore. And Hopefully it's a game that can now find its way on t television more often because you only need a three hour window of time to program it. So I hope it helps college baseball grow. It's a great sport. Uh, I hope that uh, the weather cooperates and allows for people to kind of engage college baseball earlier in the year uh, mm -hmm. because we typically catch uh, that wave of, of, of sports fans after March Madness and mm -hmm. uh, April, May, and June are really the ideal months for our, our season because that's when people uh, one, it's warm enough to get out there, but two, the, the focus may shift more to the college game. Josh Holliday is our guest. We'll be back with more on The Verdict after this. When you have something important to communicate, it becomes clear that there's a lot of competition for your audience's attention. So how can your message stand out and actually resonate with your audience? Legal Graphics has the answers. 
The team at Legal Graphics will work with you to plan, design, and even test your presentation to ensure your message will be heard and remembered. Call Legal Graphics today to schedule an appointment. The readiness is all. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. Our guest on The Verdict today is Oklahoma State baseball coach Josh Holliday. Ken? Josh, take our viewers through a typical year, if you will, uh, in the life of a college baseball player. Freshman walks into the door mm -hmm. in uh, mid-August, early September to start school. When does he meet you and uh, what happens? Well, we, we, we get to know these kids so early now. Uh, we begin recruiting many of them as early as their sophomore year of high school. So what we've kind of transitioned to is a little bit of a summer bridge before the start of the freshman year. We had eight freshmen last year go to the July session of summer school just to kind of get their feet wet, uh, get six credits out of the way, get used to Stillwater, get used to the campus. And boy, they really enjoyed that. They went home for about three weeks to, to kind of wrap up their summer. And then when they came back in August to start the fall, they already kind of felt like they knew their way around. Oh, is that a new concept? It's a new concept, one that I think has a lot of merit because kids are picking up, again, six hours of credit. They're getting uh, adjusted to the university. They're beginning some strength and conditioning things with your coaches. And so you're starting to see that, I think, speed up their comfort level with what's to expect. But uh, the fall is a busy time. Our fall is really the busiest time of year because kids are uh, they're taking a heavier course load, probably 15, 16 credits. We're going through some fall practices as a team as we start to kind of uh, form our lineups and, and compete internally against one another. Uh, and when you look at the college campuses during the fall, you've got football games and you've got all kinds of things that go on on the weekend. So really the months of September, October, and November are so busy for the kids that the fall almost takes on a life of its own. Um, obviously, this is my favorite time of year because uh, the kids are finishing up exams and heading home and as coaches this is our one little window of time where now we this can being the uh, december this January being, this being the weeks leading right up to christmas yep. and then slightly thereafter mm -hmm. so this is our little pause if you will on the calendar uh, but when we come back in january january 14th we hit the ground running and we essentially have a month to prepare our kids uh, for the season and then the season begins and uh, our season carries us all the way into the month of june now so uh, it, it is a very, very busy calendar. Uh, I think kids are uh, taking advantage of the summertime now to prepare prior to arriving as freshmen. Mm -hmm. And then once they get here, the kids will even go out and play summer baseball after our season ends. So it is a, it is a busy calendar. There's a developmental concept that exists during each phase of the year. And uh, all of them are very important if you hope to have a good team. You have to really, really get the most out of your kids through the fall semester. Mm -hmm. There's been uh, lingering t talk about uh, forcing college players to use wooden bats. They've, uh, they've used metal bats now for, for 30 years mm -hmm. or more. What's your th what are your thoughts on that? I think it would be great because I think if the more we can do to our product to make it uh, prepare these young men for professional baseball, I, I think it, it's a good thing. I think that um, it gives our game even more credibility with professional baseball so that maybe more kids will attend college out of high school instead of signing pro. The bats we're using now are relatively similar to wood bats and how they perform. And uh, I think that if not for some of the financial benefit that the metal bats company provided the college game for so many years, uh, we would be using wood bats. But uh, one, they are expensive. Uh, and two, it does take a large number of them to get you through a season. And it may not be an issue so much for universities like ours, but if you get a, a smaller level college where the budgets aren't quite as big, the dollars to purchase wood bats and outfit your team could be challenging, but uh, 
I think a wood bat is, is really uh, similar to what we're swinging with the, the, the dialed down metal bats. And uh, I think that the purity of a wood bat, I think it's good for the game. I think you see a much more true game. And again, more four to three, two to one type games instead of some of the inflated scores that, that I think mm -hmm. uh, college baseball fans got used to. <coughs> On the metal bats that you used to use before you changed to the one you're using now, uh, getting away from uh, the, that bat, was that a safety uh, feature yeah. at all? A safety it, it, was, it was driven strictly uh, by player safety. The ball was exiting the bat so fast, the pitchers were, were virtually, um, they were it was just dangerous. They, yeah, were, they, were, they were at such a, a disadvantage mm -hmm. with the ball coming off so quickly that the bats were, were dialed down to protect the pitcher and give him time to react. Well, with the dialed down bats, have you seen any change in the number of injuries or anything like that? Yeah, I don't think you see quite as many balls, you know, ricocheting off, off the pitcher. <laughs> I, I think what you do see now uh, is a different style of play. I think mm -hmm. you see teams now building their, their, their lineups to run more. I think you see a greater emphasis placed on high quality defense, whereas before you might have a home run hitter at a couple yeah. positions. I think you've seen that change. Uh, as I tell our OSU fans, our days in the 80s of hitting all the home runs and, and doing all those things, we won't see those home run numbers ever again because we're using a different uh, piece of equipment. But uh, I do think it's forced all college coaches and programs to rethink how they're going to build their teams. And to factor in now, the bat has a lot less life in it. We're going to have to create offense in different ways. We, we, we talked a little bit about the, you know, the year-round schedule of baseball, and, and, there, and there's talk about moving the schedule you know, that would encompass the summer. What are your, what are your thoughts on that, yeah. starting later, ending I, later? I think that uh, when you look at our sport uh, and, and how you hope it may grow in the future, much like we've seen how college basketball has grown into this amazing uh, fascination and tournament, the, the change of the 64-team tournament to add some playing games, and now the BCS is changing into a playoff. I think baseball has to keep evolving as well. One of the proposals is to push the season back and hope to play deeper into the summertime, and I think there's a lot of merit to it. We play more of our games at a time of the year where there's better weather. Uh, you hope that uh, with that comes bigger crowds, and with bigger crowds maybe increased revenues, and that maybe college baseball could start to make its way into some of that um, uh, prime time, so to speak, that we see college football and, and basketball have. I think the other thing, too, is it would keep kids in school year-round, which would give us a better chance to graduate our athletes. Uh, we keep them on campus in May, June, and July, where we can continue to, to push the, uh, the graduation envelope with them. And so there's a lot of uh, well, Ideally, good when would you play the World Series? I think if you, I've seen multiple proposals. One would say you'd play it in late August. I think that's a little late. I think if you could play it sometime around the 4th of July, uh, mm -hmm. to where the, the baseball fan and, and the youth leagues and the kids and the families that are looking for outdoor activity in the months of May, June, and July. If you had the heart of your season and your playoff mm -hmm. run through those, those times, I think we'd all uh, see much better crowds. Mm -hmm. I, I'd, I'd love to, to envision Stillwater on a, on a June night uh, in a setting where there's three or 4,000 people there because I think mm -hmm. that's the time of year when college baseball could thrive. Mm -hmm. uh, as it stands now, we play a lot of games in, in late February and early March, and Quite yeah. frankly, unless you're, you're out there playing in the game, 35 degrees and wind is, is tough. So well, I think that sometime in July and August is, is proposed. Under that scenario, could a player take off the fall semester, or what would your thinking be on that? Well, some of the people that are arguing for this would be to, to have a, a, a fall period, but then to give the young man a little bit more of a break in the months of November, December, and January where he could really be more of a college student during those months and not be under the gun <coughs> year-round, so to mm -hmm. speak, with his training. So. Um, there's different models and approaches. My, my main concern is that college baseball continue to grow and that it gets better. Uh, as a younger coach, I want to have a voice and work with the, the veteran coaches to take what they've seen the game do and make it better so that the mm -hmm. game and the product continues to develop because I think our other sports have, in the NCAA have done that and uh, never more apparent than watching the following of college football and basketball. It is such a, a fascinating uh, set of teams and rankings and the media coverage is out of this world so I hope baseball can find good creative ways to grow the sport so that it becomes uh, much more in line with that. We just have about a minute left and I know Mick's got a final question he wants to ask you but I wanted to ask you about this next this upcoming team. Yeah. What's it look like? Where are your strengths? Uh, where do you need some help? What's it look like to you? Well I'm very excited about this year's team. We return a number of players from uh, our ball club last year uh, I think the thing that excites me the most is some of our core players that were uh, our go-to guys last year come back to us. They're a year better, a year stronger, and 
Uh, I really like the uh, I like the toughness of our team. I think that uh, they got off last year to a, to a good start. We learned how to win as a group, and, and I hope that we pick right back up where we left off. Uh, the strengths I think will probably be some depth on the, on the mound uh, and some talented newcomers that uh, once they kind of get their feet wet, I think we'll see them go into yep. really good players. But I'm very excited about 2014. What can OSU fans do to help your program? Come out and watch us play. I think. Uh, purchasing season tickets and showing up in that ballpark and giving our kids that feeling that hey our fans are really interested in what we're doing the atmosphere in Gallagher Ibe and Boone Pickens Stadium is out of this world if we can recreate that same atmosphere mm -hmm. for our team uh, I think we play extremely well at home and uh, just continue to give to the university the way they are it's, it's a great place there's great things happening there and and we certainly benefit from that energy Josh Holliday is the baseball coach at Oklahoma State Kent and I'll have a final word when we get back good luck thanks Thank very you, much thanks, thanks for coming yeah All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality assistance and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. You will always be mom and dad to me. I really think people are so unaware of the number of kids waiting just in Oklahoma. And I think if more people knew that those children were out there waiting, you know, I think that just by the way we live our lives and the people we talk to, that, that maybe we can help encourage adoption from Oklahoma. You will always be mom and dad to me. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers back on The Verdict. We're wrapping up the show with Oklahoma State baseball coach Josh Holliday. He does a fine job in his first year or so that he's been there. The program's just going to get better and better. A couple of websites for you to check out. First of all, you can find more information about Josh and Oklahoma State Athletics at okstate.com. That's okstate.com. And we have a website, theverdict.tv. We'd love to have you go there and tell us about a guest or a subject that you'd like to see discussed on a future edition of The Verdict. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next time right here on The Verdict. <laughs>